Hi everyone, my name is Peyton and this is part two of a video going over how to set up a material showroom in UE5. If you have not already done so, check out the part one of this video in the description below. So I'm going to right click here and make a new material and this one's going to be my master material. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to open it up. I'm going to keep this one overall pretty simple just because um, like we really just need the actual like shader locations to plug things in at the moment and then just have some parameters exposed if you uh, want to additionally go a bit further with them. Um, but I'm going to bring in my actual textures now. So my AO base color, I don't need the height for the actual material in here because we'll be using the modeling uh, plug or modeling actual mode to be using the height map. Um, but we will want to keep that in mind when we're setting up our tiling in here at least. So I'm going to grab these four and drag them in and just really quickly throw them into their specific spots. So again yeah not wanting to spend too much time on this because we'll probably come back and adjust it a bit more um, later on so ambient occlusion there I'm gonna throw in my base color up here then of course roughness and my normal map right there so cool and then i'm probably going to i'll say texture coordinate and this is going to be for my tiling of course and then I'm going to multiply that. Uh, so multiply, or you can also just hit M on your keyboard while you click and get one of those. And then I'm going to do a one constant out here. And so this will be, if I right click, convert this to parameter. I'm going to name this my uh, tiling amount. That way it's pretty easily editable. Um, and then by default, this one is at one. So my tiling amount, if I close that, i um, going to set this default value to one as well. And then I just want to plug those into my UV locations on all my textures. That way we can yeah, get it working. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and change this tiling amount to two. So there we go, we have our material starting to look all right on our sphere. And I'm um, gonna go back here to my content. Instead of actually dragging this one out, I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a material instance of this uh, master material. That way uh, we're not actually changing the master material if we do any adjustments. Um, we can do it per uh, actual material instance and have one for each thing. So I'm gonna name this one the coffee or yeah coffee sphere and the reason why i'm naming it coffee sphere is because uh for things to look right the models uh with the actual cylinder as well as the sphere and all um, some of them have slightly different uvs and so i'm just simply for ease of use actually having a different instance for the different models um, that way, like I don't have to go through every time I'm like maybe jumping around with pictures and needing to change the UVs. I can have the sphere UVs set up properly and then the actual ones for the, um, the cylinder and the cube and so forth. So we have that named and I can actually go here and drag it into this material. So as you can see, now we have it in our scene, um, still looking pretty rough. We have our simple lighting coming from the actual directional light um, that we have here. If you have a directional light in your scene and it's you know not necessarily hitting it in this uh, direction, uh, I would definitely just kind of you know adjust it. You don't want it to be too much where it's fully blowing out your material, but you kind of want to hit it in a nice way where we can get some um, you know solid contrast between your uh, your different. Uh, planar faces of your material um, getting yeah some in the light some in the shadow then we might even get some cool light back here uh, with a placed point light as well um, but now we have this and we have our basic part of our material setup 
so what do we go with next? So of course we can go and adjust our material, uh, some of those things with basically our parameters and all that we can control. Um, but I think the bigger point at the moment, of course, is to focus on two of the other points that we had in the other uh, map. And so one of those, of course, being the displacement actually on top of our sphere. And then the second one, um, just adding some simple rotation to it. So now that we have this camera set up and everything else, I want to jump over to our other selection mode. So. Um, as I mentioned before, with our instance, I wanted you to remember the tiling amount for this because we will need that for actually the displacement. So as we see here, we have a tiling amount of two. So I'm going to go over and change my selection mode to modeling. And then I'm going to actually click on my mesh here and scroll down a little bit and under the deform um, section of the modeling mode uh, and these are basically all kinds of different uh, modeling tools that Unreal Engine 5 has now if you're uh, not familiar with it and uh, one of those of course is yeah displacement which is a cool way to displace your mesh um, and actually displace the geometry and it actually does bake into the uh, the mesh itself and um, transforms it and then it'll permanently keep that mesh. So that's one thing we'll have to talk about in a second as well on how to do iterations uh, with different materials and all. But I'm going to go ahead and click this displace button on here. And it's going to take a second and we'll probably get yeah some really ugly kind of uh, look to it. By default, you will most likely be uh, just set with a Perlin noise and it'll look something more like this. So one thing that we'll want to do first, of course, is change our Perlin noise over to a textured 2D map. And then what you want to do next is actually go and find your displacement uh, map. So uh, our height map is what we are, of course, using for that. Um, so you can either type it in here or actually drag and drop it into your location. Um, so I have my coffee beans height, as you can see here. And it we yeah just want to make sure that it is now plugged in there. So now going down, you might notice that like if I change the displacement intensity, it feels like the texture, of course, is not aligned properly um, with the actual like geometry displacement. And again, that is because of the UV scale. So this is where we want to put in that number that we had in our other material or in our material itself. Um, so we were doing it uh, by two instead of by one. So I'm just going to switch this one here to two for both of them. And now it looks like we uh, have things pretty much aligned properly, which is nice. Uh, one other thing that you might get to is it might have the recalculate normals on at the moment. Uh, if you turn that off, it should uh, resolve some of your lighting as well, um, just because we don't really need it to recalculate our normals after it did that displacement. It's going to approximate the new like kind of forms and everything, the valleys that the height map has created. And so it's going to, um, yeah mess with your lighting a bit. We just want to use the displacement itself and then of course our normal map uh, to get a lot of our lighting. And so I think if you do that, it's kind of um, just a little bit over the top um, in general. So yeah, we have this now set up. And one other thing too, if you wanna make it a little bit higher poly, the subdivisions are up here. So I can crank that up. Um, if you go over 10, it'll give you a warning for just geometry cost. Um, but yeah, so now I have pretty decent displacement going on. I think I could probably specifically for this material, at least, uh, crank up the intensity a bit more. Um, I think just because of the type of material, especially with how I rendered, um, this one, Previously, I wanted uh, definitely the coffee beans to feel pretty three-dimensional and really popping out. Um, so I want to highlight that again when I'm doing it in here. And so, yeah, I feel like 20 is working pretty well with the uh, the look and all overall with it. Um, 
don't see anything else at the moment that I'm going to change. So I'm just going to hit accept. And so this might take a second or two just because it's actually uh, turning the geometry that we previously had into the new geometry. Um, so as I said, it actually is changing the, the mesh itself. Uh, so when we, once this is done, I'll show you with the static mesh how it looks. And so you'll have to, okay, there we go. So I'm going to switch back from the modeling mode. And now we have our sphere. And this is what it looks like. If I, again, yeah, as I was mentioning, go in here and look at the model, even without the material on it, it has that displacement now. Um, so if you finish up with, let's say, your coffee beans, like uh, my material here, and you want to do a different material on this, um, you will need to actually switch the static mesh back over. So one super simple way of doing that is actually just hitting the reimport base mesh button here and it'll actually revert it to what actually came in. Um, so it'll get rid of yeah all the displacement that we did. Uh, this is also another great way if you're wanting to maybe you messed up or something and accidentally hit apply. Um, this is how you could also basically clear your uh, or revert your changes that you did with the displacement. Um, inside of the mesh itself so but I'm gonna close that out and now we have our scene that is pretty closely looking to what the other one had I think um, one thing might be nice in addition to this light here is if I were to take in maybe a point light or something and drag it over here and get a little bit of a cooler light um, that way we get again that contrast where um, you know it has some pretty strong uh, dark shadows here. We have the, the warm lighting here. And then if we were to just push a bit of a, a cooler lighting over here, um, we're getting kind of the full range of the material and seeing what it looks like in different types of scenarios for this. Um, so I'm just going to, yeah, maybe use the temperature itself. Uh, turn that up a bit uh, to a cooler. If I want, uh, and I feel like the temperature is not doing enough, I can also turn that off and actually go over here and pick a blue. Um, but definitely don't do too strong because uh, then it just doesn't feel natural. Um, but let's say we're happy with this material or this blue that we have going on here. I can say, yep, yeah, good with that. And then I'm probably also going to lessen the intensity of it. I don't need it that bright. Um, it's supposed to be the secondary light um, to our scene. So this is our primary. Um, and then this is the yeah secondary. So I think that works pretty well. Uh, I can, of course, like play more with like the shadows and everything also with it. Um, but I think we're already hitting... Um, pretty similar similar looks to what we had previously so I'm good with that then I might change uh, go over to my camera one more time so this is my cinematic camera that we're already locked into um, and you can play around with your aperture and focal length again uh, if you'd like to you know zoom in a bit and then you could actually like yeah just it to where you had it um, pretty much to be where you, you had like depth of field or anything like that. Um, but I think for the sake of this video, I might just leave it at that and say it's looking pretty solid. Now for the simplicity of the rotation that I did, um, I could have made a blueprint and all for it, but I actually just did it inside of the level blueprint over here. So I'm going to delete the cube and cylinder. Um, now just focus on those at the moment. And with my ball, I'm just going to go over here to my level blueprint and yeah, keep it pretty simple. I want to do drag out from my event begin play and I'm going to do uh, add rotating movement component. 
And then I actually want to drag my ball from my outliner specifically, not from the, um, the bottom content browser, but from the outliner. Um, that way it's actually grabbing the ball that is specifically in the level itself because this is a level blueprint. And going to drag that one in and plug it in there. There we go. And then I will also want to make sure that my ball is set to movable. Um, that way it can actually move and yeah, doesn't have any issues like that. And then one other thing too is this rotating movement component. I'm going to switch it from 80 to something like 10 or 20. Uh, let's say we do 15, kind of meet in the middle. Um, and this should be good enough for us to get some simple movement. So now if I go up here, I can hit simulate um, on the preview and we can see that we have that movement. So um, yeah, I could actually throw this into a, basically you throw this camera, the cinematic camera actor into a um, level sequence and render it out and actually have a turnaround of my material as well uh, where the lighting and all is working properly with it so that's a nice way you could also show off um, your materials not with just static images but also a little turnaround uh, which i think really helps show some of the depth and kind of the form of the 3d mesh but i'm going to pause that and yeah, we are pretty much at what we have for the overall scene. So I'm going to detach from that. And as you can see, it's just in this little box. Um, the black is, uh, you can, of course, change that material if you want it to be, uh, if you set this up for a parameter, I could have it to be like a dark gray or, uh, or a dark blue, like navy or something like that, um, and really be able to control the background as well. But showing off your materials, I think, works pretty well in here uh, with what pretty much, you know, it is offered with all of this. And again, it does take some setting up and getting familiar with how to work with it. But I think if you're wanting a great way to uh, render out your materials, have a lot of control and all, um, and using a free software to do so, I think this is a great option. Um, but besides that, that is about it for this video. Uh, if you have any other questions, of course, feel free to uh, comment below and I will see you in the next one.